Okay. I can see my family is watching. <laughs> My brother's watching. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm so glad that we had a, a, a webinar so we can see our families or not see, but mm -hmm. at least to communicate. Okay. Um, shall we start, ladies? Ready, ready when you are. Okay, wonderful. Um, so here we go. Um, good afternoon, or may I also say good evening to our uh, panelists and our uh, watchers in um, Israel. Erev Tov, Shalom. Uh, I'm very excited to be here with you. Uh, and before I present our speakers for tonight, just a little personal note. Um, exactly this time last year, I had the opportunity to spend four magnificent days with the family patrons in Israel as part of our uh, a biannual art trip uh, to visit our supported museums. Um, four days of art, culture, uh, discussions about the power of art and how it affected surrounding. Lovely food, only a year ago, but seems like so long ago. Um, for those who are joining us for the first time, welcome. I'm Gilly Uval, I'm the head of development of uh, the British Friends of the Art Museums of Israel, the FAMI. The FAMI supports educational programs run by 14 art museums in Israel, including the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, the Tel Aviv Museum of Art, and a dozen of regional museums across the country. As you may know, it has been a very difficult year for these museums. Uh, unfortunately, due to the governmental restrictions, museums in Israel are currently still closed. So it's also the situation here in uh, London and across the UK. Um, I'd like to encourage you tonight, uh, perhaps to make uh, a small donation in order to show your support. Uh, later on, there will be a link for donation, uh, which will appear on the chat box. Uh, feel free to use it. Um, and tonight we decided that if we cannot travel to visit the museums, the galleries, the artist studios in Israel, we should just bring them to you here in London, in the UK, in the US, I see. Um, we have a magnificent program with brilliant speakers, which I would like to introduce you uh, now. So first I would like to introduce Debbie Luzia. Debbie, say hi. Hi. Um, Debbie is a cultural researcher. She's the owner of Stern Gallery in Tel Aviv, a freelance journalist and the author of the book, Why the Mona Lisa Lost Her Smile. Uh, Debbie, born and raised in London, immigrated to Israel when she was eight years old, uh, is also an active writer who runs a weekly bilingual newsletter about the art world. I do recommend to follow it. It's very interesting and I'm addicted. Uh, Debbie will give us tonight an overview of the local art initiatives in the public sphere in Israel. Uh, I'm also very, very happy to introduce Hila Quen Schneiderman. Hila, hi. He lies the chief curator of Mobi Museums of Batyam, which is one of the family supported museums. Uh, Hila will uh, walk us through the current exhibition at the Batyam Museum of Art and will tell us what is happening inside a museum while its doors are shut. A spoiler, very interesting things. <laughs> now, last but not least, I'm very happy and proud to introduce uh, Manor Gera. Uh, Manor is the Director of Content at Fresh Paint Art and Design Fair. Um, this fair has been running very successfully in Israel for more than a decade, attracting artists, collectors, gallerists, and art lovers together. This year, uh, like many international art fair, like Freeze, like Art Basel, it has to reinvent itself digitally. Luckily, uh, Manor will take us through the art fair's highlight, which include art, design, and video art. Uh, so this is also a great opportunity for all of us to see the brilliant and creative minds in Israel um, currently in the, the art field. Um, if time remains, we will discuss the connection between new creative uh, initiatives to museums, artists and galleries during this period. And we'll try to get out of this conversation a bit more optimistic. Um, if you have any questions during this talk, click on the Q&A button and we will try to answer. Um, now, I think we should start, and Debbie, uh, let's start with your overview. March 2020, what's going on in Israel then? Well, uh, 
there was a major, there was supposed to be a major event in March 2020, and it was much anticipated. It was the opening of the Jeff Koons exhibition at the Tel Aviv Museum, and Jeff Koons was supposed to attend. And uh, we were all very excited. There was supposed to be a press conference uh, with him attending, and, and we were looking uh, uh, forward to meeting him. And, um, and then all of a sudden he um, canceled. And we ended up uh, watching him on a screen, uh, on a huge screen, he could see us and we could see him. And he talked to us and answered a few questions. And um, in the end, uh, all the events happened without him. And two weeks later, the museum closed for lockdown. Since then, apart from the summer months in which uh, the museum reopened, the works have been just lying there unseen, including the star of the show, the orange balloon dog, the famous uh, sculpture that in 2013 sold for $53 million and became the most expensive artwork of a living artist. Last week, it finally got company as part of an activist art event that brought, uh, that brought a group of professionals, art professionals, to sleep inside of closed art institutes in, in Tel Aviv. The initiative with the uh, fun name uh, Art b, &B uh, was aimed to protest against the government's neglect of the culture sector that includes, of course, not only museums, but theaters and music venues. So for four nights, each night they slept in a, in a different uh, um, art venue. Uh, and uh, they were they were actually uh, this activist group called the Protective Edge uh, were were trying to say something about the fact that uh, the the whole cultural sector has gone to sleep uh, uh, virtually. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you're aware that uh, this is not unique to Israel, but the unique problem that we have in Israel is the meager budgets that are allocated for culture. Uh, here, there's always the priorities that are, are always elsewhere. There's always the, the security. Uh, there's always uh, um, other things, the, the uh, politics that, that I'm, I'm not going to go into. But somehow, whatever and whoever, culture is always the last on the list. Uh, so it's not easy to be an artist in Israel in regular times, let alone in times of a global pandemic. Thousands of individuals in Israel whose livelihoods are bound to the arts have not been earning money for many months. And there are no compensation schemes in place for artists like we've seen in Britain, for example. And it's not only the artists themselves, but many different people that, that have different functions surrounding the artists, even down to the guards in the, in the museums. Um, these, along with many others, were sent home and, and haven't been brought back to work. Even when the museums opened in the summer, what they did, for example, in the Tel Aviv Museum, uh, uh, that's the story behind uh, this photo of uh, Ruti Directo, who is the curator of contemporary art in the Tel Aviv Museum, and she and other of the curators and even the museum directors, they replaced the guards uh, at the exhibitions uh, in the Tel Aviv Museum. And of course they answered questions and with the mask you couldn't really identify them. And there were very um, uh, funny stories that went around, uh, around that. Um, the other thing of course is that the art sector is not only isolated as far as budgets are concerned, but uh, Israeli artists depend on local collectors who, who don't really, and, and they, they don't really have a, an international market. So galleries are closed now, uh, even though uh, some of them are doing their best to do online uh, trade and, uh, and some are even succeeding, but there are no exhibitions and, um, and you know, artists will, more than anything, they want to, to be seen. And that's why the online version of Fresh Art, uh, Fresh Paint Art Fair that uh, you're gonna hear more about from Manor is really so important this year because it reaches potential buyers, not only in Israel, but overseas as well. 
But art, you know, it's like water. It will always find a way. And, and you can always count on Israelis to think outside of the box and, and to come up with, with creative ways to exhibit and to be seen. In the music and the theater sectors, we've, we've seen top rank artists perform in private gardens, uh, on, on balconies, uh, maintaining COVID guidelines, of course. And as far as visual art is concerned, uh, we've been witnessing some interesting uh, initiatives that I'm uh, really happy to share with you. So art is a lonely profession with a huge ego. The competition is fierce and collaborations are rare. But in times like these, the art community is realizing that there is truth in the saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together especially due to the fact that there is no support, as I said, for the arts, nor guidance. The only solution is to join forces. So we're seeing some really interesting collaborations evolving, uh, like uh, the um, uh, Art B&B that I uh, mentioned earlier, that had different uh, uh, venues, different uh, theatres, and all co uh, connecting together and doing things together uh, as they've never done before. Uh, we're also seeing an interesting collaboration of a group of, of artists calling themselves The Fountain as a reference to art as a source of life, and they are motivated by the need to change, uh, to charge the, the dozy art world with some, some new energy to electrify the, the, the sleeping uh, sector. And uh, they found a space in an old building that's uh, designated for restoration, they collaborated with the galleries and collectors to create a group exhibition called The Dissidents. And the exhibition brings together several generations of beloved local artists and is focused on the history of resistance in Israeli art. Uh, this, uh, this, The Dissidents and the, the Fountain Group also uh, um, can be used as an example of non-art spaces that are appearing in Tel Aviv as alternatives to the conventional galleries. Uh, another current example is the excellent installation titled Up the Wall by Guy Zagorski, curated by Mirav Katri. She, she's a consultant and a high-end agent for Israeli artists looking to break through uh, the local borders. And the installation was built in a pop-up space and visitors booked uh, time slots to visit. And it's all very sort of unconventional and off the grid. Um, I must say that uh, the major outlet for artists, uh, the major creative outlet, uh, I might say, for artists during the pandemic has been activism. Now, I'm sure you know that Israel is in a current state of polar po politics with a strong visual presence that is interesting to observe, no matter what one political views may be, and I'm certainly not going to go into it. Uh, what I am interested to show you is the is the the visual um, side of it. Uh, the weekly anti-Netanyahu protests every Saturday night in Jerusalem, they have become an amazing hub of creativity. For example, we have Shoshke. Shoshke is uh, the, alt the alter ego of the uh, well-known illustrator Zev Engelmeyer. And she, uh, he, she uh, <laughs> comes dressed in her custom-made overall and, uh, and her bling. And she's a regular participant. Um, another Just to favorite. say, Debbie, sorry to interrupt, but now there is a new character called Jorge, which is, I think, a boar. Um, yes, a wild than... pig. Wild pig, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, very creative. I, I actually uh, interviewed Zev Engelmeyer, and he, and he was telling me how uh, when he dresses up as Shoshke, he does things that he himself would never do. But under in, in that... Uh, in that costume, uh, he, uh, Shoshke is much, much more daring than he is. Mm -hmm. uh, another interesting uh, project was, uh, was done by photographer Sharon Avraham, and he created a, a series of staged photos after famous artistic images, uh, such, as, such as the Delacroix famous uh, Liberty Leading the People, and uh, Banksy's Love is, in the, Love is in the Air, the flower thrower, which is one of Banksy's iconic images and an, a very early image. In fact, I think it was one of the first images that was created outside of uh, the UK in uh, 2005 in Bethlehem. Um, 
And last week, a group of activists created a wooden Trojan horse that was actually brought to Jerusalem in pieces. And then it was quickly assembled on site and uh, made for amazing images. Uh, so um, as in many places in the world, Israel has annual events, art events that couldn't take place uh, because of the pandemic, or at least couldn't take place in, in, their, in their classic uh, format. And lucky for us, the climate here enables outdoor uh, solutions. So we have now, for example, Photo Israel, which is the largest uh, photography event uh, in the year. Uh, and they found an interesting solution. Uh, the event is now taking place um, throughout this month in one of the biggest building sites in Tel Aviv. Uh, the site is surrounded by a fence, which is one kilometers long and three meters high. And the photo exhibitions, there are many different exhibitions, they're all presented along the fence, around the fence. And uh, they've even used solar lighting uh, to uh, help people come and see it when, when it gets dark, uh, which is now quite early. Uh, last week, uh, last weekend, we had another popular event, which was completely transformed, called Loving Art and Making Art. It took place uh, in Tel Aviv, with many, many exhibits shown in the streets, in the boulevards, in the parks. Uh, the weather was beautiful, and, and thousands of people were, walked the streets admiring the art, uh, the biggest uh, attraction, uh, one of the biggest uh, attractions was this realistic sculpture of a man laying uh, on the, well, it wasn't on the pavement, you can see it's by, by a tree on the street, uh, seemingly dead. And many citizens actually called the police to report this, the body. Mm -hmm. uh, the artist is called Lali Fulling Fadida. And uh, the body uh, in the street can actually be compared to the status of the art sector during the pandemic. Um, Aya ben Ron, the artist that represented Israel in the, Ven the last Venice Biennale, uh, she had a project called Field, project, uh, Field Hospital X, uh, and the motto was, uh, do you care? And um, uh, this motto was used on the facade of the national, uh, Israeli National Theatre Habima, and this huge sign saying, do you care? Uh, really, really struck, uh, st uh, struck me. And, and I was thinking, you know, that the meaning in, in times uh, like this, that the theater has been uh, closed for, for so many months. Um, so is Echala uh, Tarbut, which is the, the uh, concert hall around the, around the same um, square. And, and, and it was like, do you care about art? And uh, I think the, the answer for this is, is, uh, is definitely the fact that people really took to the streets um, and, and, and showed that many people do care for the arts and, and for the artists. And I just like to end by saying that, that art is really a, not a luxury, luxury, it's a necessity. And a society without culture is a poor society. So let's hope that this uh, neglected sector will arise from its anesthesia and, and become as vibrant as it was before COVID-19 entered our lives. Thank yeah, you. Here, Debbie, thank you. I do want to believe that we care and let's hope that um, other also uh, being as the same. Talking about caring, uh, we're going to post now our uh, donation link to the Art Museums of Israel. As I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, the museum have been closed for quite a long period. They do need our support. So um, if you can spend even a little, uh, that would be a great support even morally. Um, and now over to you, Hila. At the beginning of March, you were asked to close the museums of Batyam without knowing when they will be open again. And then apparently all kinds of things are happening in the museum uh, with its audience, even when it is closed. So um, what can you tell us about this? Okay. First, I will thank you for inviting me to join this uh, very interesting and important panel. And I will say that uh, there, there was a big difference between the two lockdowns. Um, we, we, we are more prepared for the second one, uh, which we're still in. So, um, but first and for all, I will, inv I will invite you to, to get to know a bit more uh, Bita Museum of Art. So I will just share my screen for a moment. OK, 
Okay. So this is Batyam Museum of Art, and is it is actually the main venue of Mobi Museums of Batyam. Um, Batyam is a coastly city located south of Tel Aviv. Jaffa it is densely populated and, and statistically defined as a socio-economic periphery. In spite of its central location being just 10 minutes from the center of Tel Aviv, um, the museum was opened in 1961 and will celebrate 60 years next year. Currently, like most of the artistic institution in Israel, it is closed. And you can see now the outdoor intervention that Eli Petel did to the museum uh, for his solo show. Since then, measurements have begun. Um, so locked within the museum is Eli Petel's solo show. Um, Eli Petel is one of the most influential artists in Israel today. This is he. During his 20 year long career, Petel revisited groundbreaking themes of identity discourse, sociopolitical and economical questions while constantly examining the changing status, status of painting. So actually the exhibition today in the museum is mostly photographs, but is all about painting in the end. 10 years ago, Eli decided to devote himself to education and, and acted as the head of the art department in Bezalel Academy for eight years. During those years, he presented here and there, not uh, new works, but not a, a solo show. So um, the current exhibition is actually his first solo show in, in a decade. So one can only imagine how the art field in Israel anticipated for this exhibition, which was supposed to be open on March 19, but then two days before the opening, the, the lockdown, um, they declared the lockdown. So the exhibition stood empty and lonely for two and a half months, empty from people. And um, we opened it finally in the, in the middle of June and it drew lots of public attention and many people visited, although we had uh, very severe restrictions. So I want to show, to show you some images from, uh, from the exhibition. Um, it was very viral and it was also about the virtual world and our, uh, the icons and cell phone format. I must say that Ellie also totally changed the inner vision of the museum. He broke walls and uh, the pile that you can see also behind me is actually the walls that he um, dismantled from the museum after 20 years. So this specific vision that you see here haven't been um, um, ex existing in the museum for the past 20 years actually. And now since September, the exhibition is locked again and we are waiting for a governmental approval to reopen in order to launch the exhibition catalog that you can see some pages from it. Um, most of the works have, um, they also work in a large scale vision, but you need to get closer and, and see the details. So the, the catalog wants to offer not just like images of the space, but rather to observe more closely the works themselves. And we have all kinds of conferences and, and workshops that we plan. And so we really um, anticipate the reopening of the museum. Um, and also important to say that due to the pandemic, no tourists have visited Israel. And it's inconceivable that no international audience will be able to see this uh, exhibition live. And we are now working on, on a video that will um, not only document the exhibition, but can also, you know, give the vibe of, of touring it. And this is something very challenging. Um, um, else happened in August that between the two lockdowns, we were able to open two spaces that were dedicated to families and children. Both were generously supported by Bafami, and I must say thank you again. Um, the exhibition Real Legend was based on a collaboration with a publishing house and five illustrators. The exhibition drew many families that searched for uh, quality activities for their children at the end of the summer. And the exhibition gave, again, a lot of public attention in not simple at all um, uh, days. And um, next to the exhibition, there's another space also supported by Bafami. The second one is uh, actually a living room where children can draw, play, um, read, and hopefully relax in these very intense days. And you can see all, they are already with masks while we open this, this new space. And um, well, you know, the, the pandemic also create good things, not only bad. And what uh, happened is that during the second lockdown, we managed to collaborate with the education system of the city 
bringing virtual tours, workshops, and activities to more than 2,000 children. Um, and it was all around this children exhibition. So um, we're very happy about it and optimistic for future collaboration with the municipality. But I must say that it also sheds light on a massive challenge that institution in Israel confronts. The need to create new content for virtual platforms that requires adaptation and a totally different set of tools. We cannot replace exhibition in talking heads, you know, all day in, in the Zoom and conversation. We need to establish new creative platform which demands many resources and it's not investing in this instead of making exhibition, but it's just an additional platform that we need to establish. Um, most of the time it's even much more expensive. So this is a challenge, a challenge that we are really addressing these days. Um, it also connected to the future plans of 2021 because, you know, 2020 was a very complicated year, but we managed to survive it. Apparently, we're already in November, but next year, well, <laughs> don't know. And uh, one of the main challenges is how to plan ahead with no resource, uh, with no secured budget. You know, as you may know, the Israeli government has not yet approved the budget of 2020, nonetheless, the budget of next year of 2021. And um, in our museum, uh, we try to address this challenge. We plan to open our next exhibition at the end of February under the, this misty atmosphere. Um, the exhibition is based on the museum collection that is dedicated to a forgotten Jewish uh, artist, Isas Kharbe Ribak. We actually hold this brand of Ribak with most of the work of this artist. It's not really forgotten. Um, it's not really forgotten, but most of, of the people in Israel, for instance, just they don't they don't know. That's so where we rely on the um, art museums to educate and, and remind. Exactly, and this is um, um, an interesting thing about about this specific collection in Batyam, which I will address in a moment. So, um, Rybak was born in the Ukraine in 1897 and, and and died in Paris in 1935. He had very interesting life moving in Berlin and Moscow in between. Um, he was an important part of the Kultur League and, and the Yiddish avant-garde art movement and distinguished himself, I think, by describing the Jewish shtetl between the two world wars in expressionist and cubist uh, style. So this is one of his main uh, and, and the most important works um, that actually was restored by the Jewish Museum in Berlin uh, in, with collaboration with us and then they showed this work for seven years, and now it came back to Israel. Um, so his works were highly neglected for the past 40 years and have never been presented since. The, the body of work that we are speaking of that, that owned by the Museum of Batyam is like around of 100 works, just haven't been shown for the past 40 years. Um, and now after a long process of restoration, we are delighted to show the, this important body of work and hope that the exhibition will travel to other Jewish museums around the globe. Uh, and that we could raise the needed funds in order to publish a comprehensive catalogue raisonné, which also haven't been done yet. Um, so just to see a bit more of his work, this is really a, a Jewish cubist artist, but um, these are also very um, um, intense and interesting works. It's, it's a part of a series with 15 works called Shtetl, My Destroyed Home. Um, drawn by him on 1917. Um, and um, so this is the first plan um, for the first part uh, of 2021. And I just want to, con to conclude um, because the main challenge is that the institution and not only Batya Museum of Art, but other uh, museums and, and um, independent um, spaces around Israel are, are, are um, need, need to address. So one is planning in uncertain times, 2029 20 budget is still unknown, as I said, working under constantly changing restrictions, possibility for future lockdown, of course. Um, important exhibitions losing their impact and momentum due to long lockdowns, um, as happens with Ellie Petal, um, very unique and interesting show. Difficulties in fundraising for closed institutions. This is a very important point because we meet our main supporters during our activities. And when the institution is closed, it's very difficult uh, to fundraise. Um, also important to say that we have more actions now, not less, but reduced budget. So um, uh, this is another uh, important point. And 
also accelerated shift to online projects, um, as I uh, said earlier. And one, but not least, uh, last but not least, sorry, is creating a lobby for art institution across Israel. This is another great and fantastic thing that happened that we started to collaborate um, um, with other institution uh, planning um, and, and uh, putting pressure on, on the government and so on. So it's also a potential. Um, it's on, not only um, challenging things. Definitely, Hila, that's so impressive and well done for, for this creativity and um, yeah, as we say, as we like to say here in the family, uh, I also just want to mention to, to our audience that uh, Hila and her dedicated team at uh, Mobi were the first to respond to the family urgent call in June before a Women in Art lunch. And they developed an amazing program dedicated to women at risk run by the museum. And the, the family is very, very proud to support it. Uh, and let's hope you will be able to exec execute it uh, once the museum is open again. So thank you again for your magnificent work. Um, and personally, it was just great to see the museum wall um, again. Uh, now to the last part of our panel. I think it's time to um, whet our appetite a little bit with some fresh art and design. Uh, good evening to Manol Gera from Fresh Paint Art. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, so we are all well waited, I think, for, for, this, for this moment. Uh, usually during this time, you wear high heels and you walk across gallery booth. I guess no high heels for you this year. So what no. else is, is different? <laughs> and no back pain as well, but everything is uh, different. Um, so Fresh Paint was established in order to provide a meeting point between the general public and Israeli artists and then designers, um, attracting over 30,000 visitors each year. Uh, the first goal has always been to bring together a cultural craving audience and the creative community and help shift resources towards the local art and design field. So uh, to continue, Debbie and uh, Hila, for almost nine months, there has been uh, there have been very little uh, open spaces for exhibiting art. We're between two lockdowns, and we don't know what's ahead. Um, stores were closed, no options for selling design items. Um, but on the other hand, many artists have, and designers have had even more time at the studio to delve into uninterrupted creation and produce more work. So we felt that this year, uh, in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis, the public's longing for art and design and culture has not subsided, but rather the opposite. And it was really important for us to continue Fresh Paint's tradition in spite of the challenges and the limitations and in any format possible. So for the first time, we created um, our own digital version of the fair. Um, offering every artwork and every design item uh, for direct online purchase. Um, and the special edition 2020 continues uh, Fresh Paint's mission of uh, providing support to local creatives and offering them a platform so they can reach audiences and, and be exposed. So there's a lot to see on the platform. We have a magazine and there, there's a lot of content, but uh, we have little time today. So I'm going to delve into uh, our two greenhouses and we'll start with the artist's greenhouse. Um, it takes a little time because it's the incognito tab. Um, so I'm going to just give you a glimpse of some artists and uh, tell you a little bit about the greenhouse model in itself. Um, it's an original model developed by Fresh Paint, uh, showcasing each year um, new and full bodies of work by promising unrepresented artists at the beginning of their professional career. And uh, the artists are chosen by members of a yearly appointed committee uh, comp comprised of curators, um, established artists, gallery, gallerists, art critics, um, collectors from Israel and abroad. Actually, Hilal was part of our committee this year, so thank you for that. Um, and uh, the committee members review uh, anonymous portfolios from the artists and narrow down the list of applicants. And after that, uh, Fresh Paints curators hold uh, personal interviews with the artists and visit their studios and curate the works that are showcased uh, on the platform, there are 38 um, artists this year. We won't have time to look at all of them, but I'd like to zoom in on a couple. So first we have Moshe Ritner. 
He's a self-taught artist uh, focused on painting and drawing, and I'll let him introduce himself uh, with a special video we created. We actually created uh, a series of videos for each of the artists on the artist greenhouse because we knew that moving to a digital format, we wanted them to be able to, to give this personal touch and be able to represent themselves a little bit more than um, you know, a resume and a list of works. So I'll give Moshe do the talking. <laughs> אני בן שלושים, נשוי, אבא לשלוש בנות, אני גר במצפה כרמים, אני פועל בניין לפרנסתי ואני צייר. התחלתי לעשות אומנות בגיל מבוגר יחסית, גיל 24, אבל תמיד רציתי ליצור יצירה משמעותית ורוחנית. בתיכון רציתי להיות מוזיקאי ובישיבה אחרי זה רציתי להיות תלמיד חכם. רק לקראת סוף הישיבה חבר הכיר לי את, ה... את עולם הרישום והציור. ולקח כמה שנים שזה הרגיש לי מדויק. כששואלים אותי מה אני מצייר, אז אני אומר שאני מצייר חסידים, אבל יש רובד מתחת לפני השטח. אני חושב שאני עושה מיתולוגיה לעצמי. אני עושה דיוקה נפשי, מופשט, לא ריאליסטי. הבנתי שאני אומן ברגע שהתחילו לי כאבי בטן, שלא הרפו עד שלא יצא ציור. לא כל כך משנה לי מה הצופה מרגיש מול העבודות שלי, כמו שמשנה לי שהוא ירגיש משהו. אני חולם שתוצג העבודה שלי במוזיאון ישראל. אני נורא חשוב לי להיות חלק ממה שקורה כאן, זה חלק מהקאנון. Um, Lipna's works engage with motifs from uh, Jewish culture and Torah studies, but they also reference contemporary secular culture and build on the dissonance between these two edges. And he works with the materials available to him, such as ink and watercolors, and generates these Hasidic self-portraits or manly portraits, um, like hybrid creatures, uh, merging the holy with the profane, the human and the animalistic, uh, the fantastic and the familiar. So that's Moshe. Um, now I want to show you Gili Shachal. Um, she's actually a, a textile designer um, graduating from Shanka. I won't show her artist video, but I want to show a making of video so you can see the um, special technique that she uses. Um, so um, she's a textile designer. She actually exhibited at New York Design Week in 2019. Um, she uses um, and a unique artistic practice working with the fabric, uh, which you can see in the video. She uses sheets of cloth woven in a jacquard machine, and she creates manual separations in the fabric, cutting up the strings and creating a dialogue between each layer of the fabric. And uh, by creating changes in the fabric's pattern, she allows for new images to emerge. And so her works deal a lot with destruction and renewal and flaws and loving flaws. And um, even though she engages a lot with the process of creation uh, rather than the final product itself, uh, the end result is no less beautiful and really thought provoking. I'll let you see the end of this. This is how she puts the, the final product into a frame and, and frames it as, as an art object. And you can see she has many works on our platform in various sizes, various patterns and colors. And it's always a game of, of being unpredictable and playing with the fabric and coming to see the, the finished outcome. Uh, the last artist from the artist greenhouse that I want to talk about is Nif Friedman, a very young artist. He's 24 years old, Betzalel graduate. Um, he works in various disciplines. His artistic practice combines uh, meticulous historical research with the artistic freedom to weave imaginary stories. So in his works, he explores the lives of various historical figures, a, zool a zoologist, an Egyptologist, an Arab poet, and then he impersonates them. So he, this is him in all of these images. Um, and he inserts himself into the lives and the stories of these people. And the products of this artistic practice can be uh, video works, photographs, um, sculptures, objects uh, of different sorts. I would like to show you um, a really small section. I'll put it without sound so you can hear me talk and everything is available on the platform of one of his video works uh, where he embodies um, Ludwig Borchardt, an Egyptologist. 
And by embodying these historical figures, he inserts his image into historical documents and uses this to plant his own homosexual identity in their narratives. And he's positioning queer and, and, and gay motifs in places in which they didn't exist at all or were hidden under the surface. And this action of disguise um, really raises a lot of questions and blurs the distinction between truth and fiction, um, past and present, reality and imagination. And it's truly meant to, to cause this, this, this experience of, of confusion. Is this real? Is it not real? Is it autobiographical? What is happening here? So it's really um, very uh, thought provoking work. And it's important to note that Friedman is responsible for every detail and every stage of the process in whichever medium he works in, from writing texts to sewing costumes, creating the soundtrack to his works, editing, doing post-production, really everything. Um, so this was a, a small section of his, uh, of his video work. And here you can see an object that he created uh, a book uh, into which he inserted his own photo. This is his photo uh, printed in this uh, in this book to imitate uh, the person that he impersonated. So that's Nif Friedman, really a fascinating artist. There's much more to see inside the platform. Um, now moving on to the design greenhouse, again, an original model by Fresh Paint. Uh, we curated uh, a list of very talented designers and curated uh, the uh, products that they uh, showcase inside the platform. I would like to zoom in on a, a few. Um, so the first one will be Ceremonials. It is a brand by a product designer, Shira Keret, taking its inspiration from uh, traditions and ceremonies of the Jewish family. Um, and the objects that Ceremonials um, offers are inspired by thousands of years of Jewish heritage, history, and culture. As you can see here on the platform, we have a Kiddush cap, uh, we have Mezuzot, and we have a menorah. So it's a, a Judaica brand, uh, but trying to be really timeless and elegant and merge the functionality and usability of these items uh, with um, a contemporary look and feel. And they're manufactured by the best, best craftsmen um, from the best, finest materials. So they're really uh, meant to, to sustain for a long time and be a family heirloom for generations like uh, most Judaica uh, products are. So this is a very beautiful um, project by Shira Keret. The next one is Ayota. Uh, they also have a video that I would like to put here with that the music so you can hear me talk, just so you can see the texture uh, and the materiality of their work. So this is a lifestyle brand um, creating interior decoration and accessories but also it's a social project. They um, empower women who are otherwise unable to work by teaching them the crochet technique, and then they employ them, they provide them with work, which they can then carry out uh, from their homes. So it's really actually a really a good model to work at uh, during lockdowns. Um, and IOTA's profits are also being invested in other social projects. And the uh, products featured on Fresh Paint 2020 are objects um, that are meant to be uh, moved, uh, lifted, uh, dragged between indoors and outdoors. I'll show you a glimpse of, of these products. Um, we have a, a, a poof and a cushion bag and a, a rug, and they're made from high quality uh, UV protected materials so they can really be suitable for both interior and exterior spaces. So uh, this is Iota. Um, the next designer, is uh, Daniel El Kayam. Oh, sorry, I see it's uh, it closed. So this is Daniel El Kayam. Uh, he creates uh, design art pieces, uh, specializing in conceptual design and inspired by natural phenomena and uh, the notion of sustainability. And he uses natural materials and aesthetics to create uh, one of a kind, unique indoor objects. And this collection uh, showcased on Fresh Paint displays his interaction with burnt wood. This is actually all made of wood, but burnt wood. You can see it in the vessels here and the vases and here at, as the base of the mirrors. And it's inspired by wildfires. 
which is also a phenomenon we, well, not exactly us personally, but both California and Australia came to know very well in 2020. Um, and it's a project he started working on during the first COVID lockdown, actually, in Israel, and has continued to develop it ever since. So um, showcasing it on the Fresh Paint platform during the second lockdown was kind of a, a nice uh, end to it. Um, and the last uh, designer that I would like to speak of is Studio Fee by Mickey Mann, and she also has a video. And um, Studio Fee is actually a research lab and a studio, and they call themselves a playground uh, for um, researching metal design. And their new vessel collection was designed exclusively for Fresh Paint 2020. And it's a contemporary take on ancient clay vessels, uh, specifically from the Canaanite and post-Canaanite period. And they're colored in earth tones, uh, suggesting the use of clay, as you can see in this movie. Uh, but they're actually made of very thin coated metal. Um, so this opposition is really interesting and surprising in, in my opinion, and really turning them from everyday objects to designed pieces of art. Um, so you can see most of the examples here in the video. And of course, each of the products is seen separately on our platform. Um, so, so this was a very brief uh, glimpse of Fresh Paint 2020, a very small segment of all the talented artists and designers that are showcased on our special edition. Uh, you're very, very welcome to check it out for yourselves. Uh, we're online until the end of this month and uh, we're also available for any questions. And, um, and really this is the best uh, possibility that we had to give to our artists and our designers to help them be exposed to a wide audience and give them some sort of exhibition space during these um, these very interesting times. So thank you. Thank you, Mano. This is um, really, really great. Um, I promise that we will end up this session um, optimistic. So perhaps I'm just gonna ask each one of you the same question and it is what is the I would say the best scenario for, for the food that you were um, discussing in terms of getting out of, of, of COVID-19 situation. So um, perhaps Debbie, maybe you can share your thoughts about what would be like the, the ideal, how would you see 2021 in the, the most ideal way? Uh, well, uh, considering the fact that uh, the priorities uh, of the uh, uh, the forces that can actually regulate and give uh, budgets to the art sector, the, these priorities will not change, then we have to depend on uh, uh, collaborations and, of course, um, the generosity of, uh, of maybe collectors or patrons. The whole idea of patrons today, I think, uh, is suffering. And um, for some reason... Uh, my research has shown that there is a, um, a dramatic reduction in people who are actually um, willing to uh, donate or contribute to, to the art sector, not for their own benefit, but for the actual art benefit. People today who invest in art are um, more than ever interested in making a profit, in doing a good investment for themselves but the art will not exist. The art will not, um, uh, will not uh, bloom if, uh, if, if there's not money uh, and, and uh, resources uh, that are uh, running in the system. Uh, so I think that, uh, uh, that if more people would um, be willing to donate and to contribute to developing uh, specific projects that are in my ideal world, uh, collaborations between uh, different institutes. Uh, and I think the connection of minds in different, uh, you know, just put your ego aside and get on with it and do things together. Amazing things would happen. Thank you, Debbie. And um, Hila, what, what would be an ideal scenario for Moby, let's say in January? I cannot agree more with, with Debbie, so I, I will try to say another thing and not just to, um, to say it again. Uh, 
Um, so I think that one of the most interesting things that the coronavirus um, has discovered for us is the importance of public sphere. And, and um, in Israel, it is a very um, neglected um, um, issue and uh, you don't see uh, many municipalities that invest in this kind of, of uh, public sculpture. So I think that, uh, and, and I see Museum of Batyam and most of the museums in Israel has wonderful parks. Um, so maybe to assist, to develop this kind of, of uh, public art. Um, also education wise to make more and more artists um, equivalent to, to, um, to do this kind of art. Um, and to uh, invest in public programs that could take place outside because the COVID is not going to, to vanish in 2021. So we can plan um, in more ways and also to support that I, I said it in my, in, in my short presentation, I said again, um, to invest in, in um, virtual platforms uh, to really um, recreate art through them and not just present existing and physical things. I, can, I think it would be a tremendous support um, to museums and um... yeah and I think if I'll take it from here and I'll, I'll direct the question to you Manu I think this year you managed to 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 gain more of virtual experience more virtual um, um, reach out um, exposure. how exposure yeah that was thank you Debbie that was the word I was looking for um, how will you see uh, next next year uh, Fresh Bend Art Fair so I'm not a prophet. Um, ideally, we would love to have the good old fresh paint as a physical art fair with thousands of visitors every day and walking between booths and on heels and all and all of that, um, because there's no substitute for for really seeing uh, art uh, face to face and for us also to meet the public, to meet the audience and see their reactions and be a part of that. Uh, event. Uh, but on the other hand, I think that, um, as you mentioned, the the digital outreach is much bigger and we want to go even bigger and uh, go beyond, you know, the, the familiar crowd of those that love our design and culture, but really that the potential is endless. Um, and it also depends on you know, public ed on educating the public to, as Debbie said, to to contribute to art, to be interested in art and culture. But I think we have so much more people to to reach. And um, also, in an ideal scenario, I would love for all the artists and designers to survive this um, not so easy period and to be able to um, to continue creating and for fresh new talent to not be deterred from the financial circumstances of the art and design field at this moment, because Fresh Paint reveals new talents each year and we need them to, to go for it and to continue to, to create, so. Sounds good. And um, with your lovely wishes and messages, I think we should, we should call it a panel discussion. Uh, so thank you uh, for being us uh, tonight. Um, for our uh, attendees and viewers, uh, please follow Befami on Instagram or join our mailing list to join our cultural program. Uh, we have a wonderful and committed cultural committee who works literally days and nights to bring you the most interesting speakers virtually. Before we say goodbye, uh, let's just remember that this period shall pass. And in the meantime, let's find our ways to support art, to support artists, to support museums and support galleries and to support each other. And what else can I say? Good night from, from London to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night Thank you. from the Negev Desert. Thank you <laughs> from, yeah, Batyam and Tel Aviv and Mitzvah Ramon. Laila Tov. Laila Tov.